In this lecture, we will discuss about the secondary storage devices or secondary memory. Secondary memory or auxiliary memory or also it is also known as uh, external memory is a non-volatile memory. That is whatever data is stored in the secondary memory is non-volatile. That is it can be stored permanently even if the power is turned off the data stored in the secondary memory will not be lost it is a bulk storage and it has lot more capacity as compared to your primary memory and the secondary memory is the one which is not directly accessible by the cpu usually the programs or any other instruction which are not currently being used by the cpu will be stored in the secondary storage or secondary memory so the commonly used uh, secondary storage devices are hard disk and floppy disk so there are basically two categories of secondary storage devices or your secondary memory based on the technology being used uh, one is magnetic disk another is the optical disk we will discuss briefly about this in detail in the coming slides magnetic Disks. So, magnetic disks are thin circular plastic plates uh, coated with some magnetic material. They make use of the magnetism property in order to store the data. So, the disk rotates at a high speed like around 7200 RPM with which the data is stored on the surface of the plates. So, the magnetic surface is again divided into concentric tracks and each of this track is further subdivided into smaller segments known as sectors. So each sector can hold fixed number of bytes for example on 256 bytes or 512 bytes and so on. What we see here is in this, uh, an example of magnetic disk that is the hard disk. So the advantage of using a magnetic disk that it provides high storage capacity and it is more reliable you can see here the organization of the surface magnetic surface into tracks and sector these concentric circles what you see here are nothing but the tracks within that these individual segments what you are seeing here are the sectors to uh, write the data onto a surface of a disk we need to identify the correct track there is a track number as well as the sector number. Next we will see the commonly used secondary storage device that is hard disk. So a hard disk is basically a set of uh, disks that are stacked together uh, which looks uh, more like a phonograph uh, records so a simple uh, a single hard disk includes several platters or in general called as uh, disks so that are covered with some magnetic material so each disk requires two read write heads one for each side that is data is recorded on both the sides and each of these you know read write heads are attached to a single access arm so they cannot uh, move independently the read write uh, heads can pivot back and uh, forth over the disk to read or write the data on them the date now where exactly is the data is stored so the data is actually stored on the surface of a disk in sectors and tracks the read write head does not actually touch the disk instead just barely skims above them supported by a cushion of moving air that is generated by the spinning of the disk so this is the uh, central motor keeps on rotating the disk at uh, uh, around 7200 rpm as such the the air provides the cushion so that the heads just skim, skim through the surface of the disk and the data is written onto the disk. Now, to access the data from a hard disk, 
a disk address has to be specified so the disk address represents the physical location of a record on the disk so how, how we can identify a particular you know uh, location to uh, write the data or in order to read the data from the hard disk so we have to first identify the sector number track number then the surface number so based on that we can identify a particular location on the hard disk so typically a hard disk drive uh, has two electric motors one is a disk motor to spin the disk and an actuator motor to position the read write head assembly across the spinning disk so you can see over here these are the platters or the disks which are uh, stacked one above the other and this is your actuator arm this is the axis and this is the actuator arm we are having and this is nothing but your jumper pins so jumper pin it is usually used when you to make uh, a hard disk as a master master or a slave then we have this power connector over here so floppy disk so floppy disket contains a single flat piece of uh, circular plastic coated with uh, metal oxide and enclosed in plastic cover so the floppy disk is also based on the you know magnetic uh, disk technology and it works similar to your hard disk but the size of the capacity storage capacity is very very less as compared to your hard disk it is around 1.44 mb but for floppy disks are smaller in size they are portable and they are also cheaper but we don't see nowadays these floppy disks they have become obsolete now optical drives or optical disks so optical storage refers to storing data on an optically readable medium by making marks in a pattern that can be read using a beam of laser with high precision which is in focused on a spinning disk so optical storage devices are most widely used and are uh, reliable storage devices the most commonly used or most popular ones are your cd cd roms dvd roms or cd rewritables and so on so an optical storage medium consists of a flat round portable metal disc okay which is usually around 0.75 inches in diameter and less than 120 120th of an inch thick okay the disc is coated with a thin metal plastic or other material that is highly reflective so now how we are going to store the data on a optical disc so the optical disc stores information in the form of pits and lands so the pits are tiny reflective bumps created with a laser beam and lands are flat areas flat areas which separating the pits so while a land reflects the laser light and is read as binary digit 1 that is all the data is either 0 or 1 so wherever we encounter that is the uh, land then the laser beam is reflected that is read as binary digit 1 and wherever we have a pit so a pit uh, usually absorbs the light so and is read as binary digit 0 so cd-rom is one of the commonly used optical disks next is cd-rom and dvd so the compact disk read only memory or cd-rom is a type of typical you know type of optical disk that uses laser technology to read and write data onto the disk so single cd-rom can store a large amount of data but once the information is stored onto it it becomes permanent and it cannot be altered so this means that the stored information can only be read from read for read for processing purpose so that's why the name is cd-rom now cd-rom in its storage capacity is around 682 mb okay and we have other versions that is CDR that is recordable, CDRW that is uh, rewritable, wherein you can 
erase the contents using the same laser technology erase the contents of the cd and then again burn new data onto it we have a dvd that is digital video disc or digital versatile disc which is extremely has got extremely or high or the capacity the storage capacity is extremely high as compared to your cd rom so usually the dvd the capacity start from around 4.7 gb to around 17 GB. So again, we have here other versions like uh, DVD uh, RW that is rewritable wherein we can write the data, we can erase the data and again rewrite the data onto the DVD. Then we also have a Blu-ray disc which is again which has got better quality, which provides better quality as well as the storage capacity is also quite larger as compared to your uh, DVDs. It is a flash memory. The flash drives are removable, rewritable, and are physically much smaller drives, which weighs you know maybe less than even 30 grams. So around in 2010, if you see the USB flash drives, uh, the storage capacity was around 256 GB. So such devices are good uh, substitute for your floppy disk or CD ROMs as they are very smaller faster and have thousands of times more capacity and are more durable and reliable. So a flash drive consists of small printed circuit boards carrying the circuit elements and a USB connector insulated electrically and protected inside a plastic metal or you know you can say rubberized cases okay, that can be carried you know very easily. So the USB connector is often protected inside a removable cap. So USB devices are very much uh, commonly used nowadays. You can see the one is the pen drives, you have your SSD cards, you have your HD cards, micro HD cards which you use in your you know smartphones uh, as such and again the pen drives, we are using the capacity of the pen drives have drastically increased now. Uh, or you know it's almost uh, like uh, you know the capacity of a pen drive is almost nearing a hard disk as such now so all these flash drives and these uh, cards sd cards micro sd cards are very commonly and widely used in nowadays now we'll see the comparison of primary memory and secondary memory the primary memory or also the uh, main memory is the one which is accessed directly by your cpu so whatever programs or data which are currently being used by the cpu are stored by the in the uh, are sto or stored in the primary storage whereas your secondary storage it is not directly accessed by the cpu so uh, primary storage usually consists of your uh, RAM and ROM in which RAM is volatile whereas secondary storage is not volatile it is used for the permanent storage purpose so RAM is directly installed onto a motherboard whereas the hardest drive is connected to the motherboard by a cable so the primary memory or the main memory is not faster and uh, that's why it is directly accessible by the CPU whereas your secondary storage it is quite a bit slower as compared to our primary storage but it is used primary memory is basically used for uh, processing data whereas your secondary storage memory is used for the storing the large amount of data for permanent use or for a very longer duration of time but the primary memory is lot smaller whereas the secondary storage is lot larger as compared to your primary storage but primary storage is very very costly because since it is very fast that is why the cost of your primary storage is very much more compared to your secondary storage it is cache memory so cache memory is a high speed memory which is placed in between the main memory and the cpu so it is used to reduce the average access time to access the data from the memory cache is smaller and faster memory so once when the cpu needs the data or any uh, instruction it wants to process it needs some information or data it will first check with the cache memory if it is available in the cache memory it will take the data from the cache memory 
So usually what happens is the cache memory will be empty initially. So once when the CPU needs the data, first it will check in the cache memory. The data will not be available. It will access the primary memory and if that is available there, it will access the data from the primary memory. If it is even if that is not accessible there, it will directly go to the secondary memory, fetch the data and put it into the primary memory and the copy of it will be stored in the cache memory. So next time when there is when the CPU needs the same data, it will it can access the data from the cache memory. Usually the uh, copy of data copies of data which are most frequently used will be stored in the cache memory.